Hi, Sean, and welcome to ChefMasterclasses.com. Great to be here. Now, I've had your prawn cocktail. I'm pretty excited that you're sharing the recipe here. Mm. Is that one of your favourites? I guess it's become a bit of a, uh, a signature dish um, over the last couple of years. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, you're the head chef at Radii at the Park Hyatt in Melbourne, but I'm told you've worked in all sorts of places. Yeah. yeah Where did I, you start out? Well, you know, I've been with Hyatt now for 11 years. This is my fourth property with Hyatt. Uh, previously to that, uh, I was in restaurants. Uh, I worked in London for about three years. Um, I did two years at, uh, with, um, at the Oxo Tower, which is part of Harvey Nichols. Mm -hmm. over there. So quite a big restaurant, 5,000 covers a week, 50 chefs, so that was, that was good. Uh, prior to that, uh, I played in bands for a while, so um, did an apprenticeship when I was young, got out of it and uh, thought I'd try and be a bit what of a... What did you play? Uh, guitar and, and sing and all that sort of thing. So that's what I was doing in London, actually, before I um, got seriously back into cooking. And uh, a mate of mine was running a, uh, an agency, a chefing agency, and uh, I was gigging actually at the Oxo Tower, and uh, they were looking for staff, and he said, look, I've got this position, I think you'd be good for it. You were a better cook than you are a guitarist, well, is that what he was saying? Well, <laughs> in the end, in the end it worked out that way, so, um, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, after, after a couple of months there, I thought, look, you know, I really need to start focusing on, on, uh, on, on the cooking side of things, and uh, that's how it sort of panned out. So how do you get a job at the Hyatt? Well, that was actually, getting a job with Hyatt was also uh, a little bit of an accident. Um, came back from the UK uh, with my future wife and um, we decided to, that Noosa would be a good place to live. Uh, I looked around at options there and um, uh, Hyatt, I had no idea about Hyatt. So, um, it looked nice. Yeah, it looked nice. Approached <laughs> them and basically ended up getting a job um, as um, the chef de cuisine in their signature restaurant. And uh, from there, moved to uh, India with Hyatt. We opened three hotels over there. Did you cook Indian food when you were working in India? No, I was sent over there as a, a specialist for the Western cuisine. But, you know, it was great to be exposed to um, all of those elements and the varieties in different Indian cuisine. You know, endless varieties, endless flavours and uh, you know, that was one of the, the, the most memorable things I'll take away from it. Was there something that you um, took from India that, that was stuck with your cooking? Like a, any uh, special tips? Not, not really special tips. I, I really learned how to uh, be resourceful because uh, you know, opening a hotel in India it was um, very challenging to find the type of ingredients that we needed to open you know, a Western style restaurant. So who does cook, do most of the cooking at home? Uh, look, it, it's a bit of a, a mixture, you know, with the um, sort of the variable hours that I do. Uh, healthy food, uh, the kids like you know, a variety of different things. We don't feed them anything that's, uh, that we don't eat ourselves. Uh, a good example is uh, just on the weekend, my daughter said she wanted to cook, so we made chicken fried rice, lots of vegetables, some spinach in there. She pretty much made it from scratch. Fantastic. Was, and how old is she? She's nine. I was freaking out. She's got the 20 centimetre chef's knife <laughs> cracking away there. But it's actually, it's one of the things I learned in India, uh, how to feed kids. You know, I went to an average you person's... You on this curry leaf. What well, I went, you go to an average person's home <laughs> in India, they don't feed the kids different food. The, kid, the kids oh, eat so the same the food as the food. adults. Mm. And this is little kids, you know, six from six months old, they eat the same as the adults. So they don't get so, the butter chicken? Well, you know, for me it's, it, it's a sign that we condition our children to have certain tastes. And, uh, you know, that's the one thing at home. When I try to cook, I don't make separate food for the kids. Okay, and do they eat it? Absolutely, they haven't got a choice. <laughs> so, you know, it, but the thing is, I'm not going to throw loads of, you know, chilli into a... Mm. A, a dish for the kids because it's a, it'll be overload for them. But slowly, you know, you expose them to different flavours. Okay. So my daughter was one and a half when we went to India. So straight away, you know, we were eating at, you know, street stalls, you know, proper Indian food, authentic Indian food. So she was exposed to that sort of thing from an early, early age. So what, uh, what's your, um, the favourite dish in your house yeah. from your kids that you cook for them? Oh gee, you know, it could be anything. Like yesterday, uh, we had I made lasagna for them, but 
lasagna at our house is not the traditional one. It's full of you know there's spinach in it. There's there's um, uh, you know kidney beans. It's healthy. You know, that's like me with thing. my bolognese grating in the carrots and Yeah, celery that sort of thing, yeah, 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 yeah. Even things with you know, like making meatballs and things like that, that's got loads of vegetables in it. So what food can't you live without? Uh, I think if I look in the pantry, there's always pasta, there's always it's the staples, you know. Um, I don't really get stuck on I've gotta have this, I've gotta have that. You know, if I if I think about the foods that I really love, the experiences. I think that's they're, they're the two things that have to be married together. It's the experience as well as the food. Now I grew up in North Queensland. We're out fishing. We're out crabbing. You know, we'd go to a remote little island or creek. We'd catch some mud crabs. We'd catch a few fish. We'd 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 have a, a fire. We'd put them on the coals and we'd eat them within two hours of catching them. That doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't matter where you are. That's as good as it gets. So, you so know, that would be your favourite meal? That sort, that sort of thing, you know, um, out under the stars, no one else around, a few mates and, um, you know, now, you know, it's with the family, so, you know, getting them out there and experiencing that sort of thing, you know, roasting a whole fish over the coals and picking the bones out of it, putting it in the mouth, you know, a little, just a squeeze of lemon or a bit of sea salt, fresh mud crab, crack it open, away you go. Well, thank you for joining us on ChefMasterclasses.com. Pleasure to be here.